Hi right, guys, so in today's tutorial we're going to show you how to paint up the ruined columns from our web store in a more kind of magical realm inspired color scheme. So we've done uh, standard gray, we've done cool, uh, cool stone, we've done warm stone. Now we're going to do something a little bit different, something a little bit more uh, interesting. So this, uh, this color scheme works great for uh, depending on what kind of atmosphere you're looking for. This is good for like underground or maybe uh, maybe you like to play Age of Sigmar in the mortal realms or in some kind of fantastical D&D setting. Uh, this will be good for that. So just like always, we start off with our black primed model and we've already applied our Zenithal highlight to this via the airbrush. And that's just taking the white paint and spraying it from above in a downwards angle to uh, simulate the natural light, how it'll settle at the tops of the shapes, get darker at the bottoms of the shapes. All right, guys, so step one with the Magical Ruins color scheme here, we're using our red terracotta. We got red terracotta spraying underneath in a glaze bringing this color up into those transitional areas where the uh, darker gray meets with the lighter gray. Really glazing this on here, nice light glaze, letting our uh, black and white values that we established with our zenithal highlight stage really shine through here. this up. It's alright if you get it into the uh, brighter gray areas and even the white areas because we're going to be coming in with some, some other paints here. It's just important that we get this nice kind of uh, reddish brown color laid in here in the shadows. And, uh, that's the thing. Alright, so step two we're going to be sending some Games Workshop paint through the airbrush actually. And uh, although this is definitely thicker paint, you can totally send it through the airbrush just fine. Just got to make sure we uh, thin it down properly. Uh, usually with Games Workshop paint, I find like a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio mixture of paint and thinner will do the job to get a nice glaze with the airbrush paint through the air uh, with the Games Workshop paint through the airbrush. Right, so this color is Sotek Green. It's a nice uh, mid-tone teal. So with the Sotek Green, I'm going to come in from the opposite angle here. So instead of from below, I'm going to come in from above and uh, kind of focus on the tops of the rocks here. Try to avoid the, the gravel and the dirt as much as I can here. Kind of keep that. Keep that as the red terracotta color. Step two. This is probably the simplest out of the color schemes that we've shown for the ruined columns so far, but it's probably also my favorite. And that just kind of goes to show you how, um, you know, trying out different things and experimenting with different colors um, can actually lead to some cool results. Uh, I developed this color scheme. Um, in an attempt to uh, get something cool on the table with uh, as few steps as possible. And uh, so there's only about four or five steps in this process here. And it's designed also with the idea that you can bash paint a whole lot of terrain at the same time using these steps. So our uh, next color we're going to be using in the next step. Um, step three is going to be teal from Golden. Um, it's a nice bright teal color, uh, but you can use whatever color you want. You don't have to use this color. The ideas are just going uh, to a brighter teal than the Sotek green was. 
couple steps up in brightness. And similar to the last step, but this time we're just going to be uh, coming in a bit closer to the model so we can target a bit more directly the very top of these columns. Really bring up this contrast. Yeah, we've got some creepy looking stones so far. Now we're going to move away from the airbrush and step on into a dry brushing step. All right, so I'm going to take my teal, my golden teal from the previous step and put it on my palette here. Take my handy dandy dry brush, nice stiff bristled brush. Load it up with some of this teal paint and uh, use my paper towel to kind of work it into the bristles while removing most of it from the brush. And now I'm able to kind of come in and by lightly dragging this brush across the raised edges of this stone, I'm going to start bringing out this texture that's on all these ruins. And uh, using dry brush is great for terrain because it adds a nice little bit of texture as well. It's not super clean like you would if you were going in and just edge highlighting everything very carefully. Uh, sometimes you don't want that look. Sometimes you want a more dirty, kind of weathered look. And uh, finally, I'm going to take a little bit of white now and add it directly to my teal on the palette there. And mix it in for a brighter teal, which we will then do the same thing, but this time a lot more carefully and subtly, really only focusing on the very tops of the shapes here. All right. So yeah, guys, this is at a good tabletop ready level now. Go ahead and put this on the table and play with it. But I'm gonna kick it up to the next level a little bit, use some weathering pigment. We also offer this on our web store alongside the ruined columns that we've been painting today. We have all kinds of colors for this, uh, but for today's project, I've decided to go with this uh, bright, kind of orangey, brown, rusty kind of color here. And this is gonna be a very nice contrast against all of our teals and blues we've had. Just make sure our brush that we're using for the weathering pigment is very dry. We want to make sure it's super dry. We don't want to have any kind of moisture on that brush. Now we're just going to come in and kind of dab this on to the recesses, a few spots, and then use the brush, kind of work it around. I'm using the lid of the jar that holds the weathering pigment as a bit of a palette. Because a little bit of this stuff goes a long way, guys. We don't want to uh, go overboard with it. So you can always add more of this stuff. It's pretty hard to, to go back, so. But uh, we can just kind of go around here. I'm aiming mostly for the recesses. Just add a bit more interest to the model here, a bit more tonal variety and the orange rusty kind of dirt color is going to complement our blue teals rather nicely. And at the end of the day, it'll look cool. Let me put a little bit up there. All right, guys, there you go. Now I have the magical ruins.